Hey everybody, welcome to Mammoth Interactive's YouTube channel. First of all, I want to thank you for watching this video. And remember that this channel doesn't do Patreon, instead we sell our digital courses down below. And every single dollar that we get from the products you buy below goes into making more content. The best way to help out this channel and Mammoth Interactive is to subscribe to Mammoth Interactive's huge library of content. Get thousands of hours and hundreds of courses for a low, low price down below. We have a monthly option and a yearly option. Thanks for listening and I'll see you in the video. Hello everyone and welcome to our course. In this lecture, we're previewing the first project that we will build in this course, which will be a website with React and Material UI. All right, so in this project, we're going to have our navigation bar. First, we'll build a simple one, then we'll build a more complex and responsive navigation bar, which will toggle for smaller screens. All of our projects are going to be responsive, meaning they'll work on different screen sizes, they'll adapt to different screen sizes, and they'll work on all browsers as well. After we build our navigation bar, we are going to build our header here, where we'll have a background image with some text promoting the website. Then we will have cards that promote different products. This can also easily be adapted for a portfolio or for a blog, you could also use these cards and this whole template. So we're going to learn how to build from scratch these cards with a title and images and descriptions and icons, all using Material UI and React. And finally, we will finish it off with a footer. And that is going to be project one of the course. Very exciting stuff, very fun project, learning how to build this website from scratch with React. All right, so join me in the next lecture where we will talk about our second project that you will build. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our course. In this lecture, we are previewing the project that we're building, our second project, which is, will be a landing page. All right, so we're going to build this template from scratch with React and Material UI. We're going to have this main grid item at the top, which is promoting the product of the landing page, then we'll have another component which uses another grid to discuss the product features. Then we'll have another component that shows product pricing. And finally, we'll have a footer. All right, so I'm very excited to teach you how to build this project later on in the course, and I will see you in the next lecture. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our course. In this lecture, we're going to talk about why you should learn React and also what is React. All right, starting off, what is React? React is a JavaScript library for building user interfaces. And it is fast, simple, and scalable. As well, it's open source and began in 2013 as a Facebook project. What is React used for? Well, you can build browser and also native mobile applications with React. So you can build websites that will work both on all types of devices like both computer and mobile. And also you can build native mobile applications for the app stores. You can build either complex single page or multi-page applications that are local or server rendered. So you can build any website that you'd like in React. A lot of companies use React, big and small, like Facebook, Microsoft, Twitter, Uber, WhatsApp, Instagram, and thousands more. React is a very popular library. Why should you use React? What are the benefits? Well, building with React makes developing large apps and websites much easier because instead of writing all of your HTML code and your JavaScript code, well, HTML and CSS mostly, in one huge file, you can separate your components into different files. So you are going to have a lot cleaner system for developing large websites because you can reuse your code for each component that you create. For example, I could create one grid item and I could reuse that component and just change the title and the description, but I won't have to rewrite the whole code for that component. I'll be able to reuse it. In that way, it's similar to object-oriented programming that way. As well, a large variety of libraries are compatible with React, so you're not limited to just React. And React supports all major web browsers and Internet Explorer 9 
and greater. So it works very well on all different browsers and devices as well. What coding language does React use? Well, you can use either JSX or vanilla JavaScript. JSX is a combination of JavaScript and XML. It's quite similar to JavaScript, not hard to pick up, but you can also just use vanilla JavaScript, which is what we will do. You can also use Babel in order to access new ECMAScript 6 features, so new JavaScript 6 features, or just vanilla JavaScript as mentioned. And that is what is React and why you should learn it. Awesome. Join me in the next lecture where we're going to talk about the UI part of this course. So we'll talk about what is Material UI, which is a library for React, and why you should learn Material UI. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our course. In this lecture, we're going to learn what is Material UI from Google's Material Design, and also why you should learn it, why this is a very important library for building user interfaces and front-end web development. All right, so let's jump right in. There is a problem with making any website, and that is creating consistent components and also being able to reuse those components. Because even if you are using React to make components of your website, so you can make a grid item, you can make a heading, you can make a footer, you can make a navigation bar. Well, how do you make the design consistent? Well, we want to be able to create consistent design and user interfaces without having to reinvent the wheel. So the solution to address this problem is to standardize components and functionality. Luckily, we don't have to do this ourselves because Google created a very helpful library known as Material UI for React, which uses the Material Design design language. So let's talk about the different options that are available for you to standardize your user interfaces. Well, to standardize your design, one option is Bootstrap or React Bootstrap. Very commonly used, Bootstrap is the oldest option here for addressing the problem of consistent design. But Bootstrap was not originally created for React, and therefore it is somewhat restrictive, but still very important to know and commonly used. Another option is Semantic UI or Semantic UI React. It is also ported, and there is no React-specific styling. It is also dependent on the main semantic library. So that's why we have a third option, Material UI. Material UI is built by Google explicitly for React. It's very commonly used and it has extreme flexibility. It maintains consistency in your designs. So you are going to have consistent design, not just in your website, but also with standards for design today. Material UI is actively in development with advanced feature support. There is an active community in this open source project. So let's talk about Material UI and understand more about what it is and how we are going to use it to build our websites. Material UI is an open source library that works with React built specifically for React. So we're going to use Material UI and React to build our websites. Material UI is one of the top user interface libraries for React. It is a great solution for consistent design. Material UI features React components that implement Google's material design. So that is going to save you a lot of design time because you are going to have pre-built styling inside of your website immediately just by using Material UI tags. So just like you could make a text tag in HTML or even in React, you can make a text field, which is a material UI tag. And just by being a material UI tag, it has design built into it. That's going to save you a lot of design time. What is Google's material design? Let's discuss this a bit more because that is what material UI is built from. It's built from material design. This is a design language built by Google and it provides a unified resource and resource components for different devices. So a bit more into material design. It provides a single overarching design paradigm, which means there are commonly used and overarching design features like colors or shapes, movement, animations, transitions, any part of the user interface development, the front end development. 
Material design provides an overarching paradigm for design. And it's used not just in websites, but in apps, both iOS and Android, as well as websites for mobile and for desktop. Material design is adaptive across all platforms, which means all of those types of devices. And it provides a full flow framework of interactions, which means you can handle clicks, you can handle presses, you can handle swipes, you can handle scrolls, all of that. It is based on paper, ink, and magic. So it's based on actual interactions with the physical world, which is where the material comes from. It tries to mimic real life interactions as though you were hitting a button in real life. It would give you that same animation. That's the idea behind material design. It's grounded in tactility and physicality. So you try to implement these types of material symbolism in your design. And developed by Google, it's been very commonly used to create all sorts of websites and applications. Material design is also great for motion dimensionality and color. It provides a simple, flat, and bold user interface. And you'll see it across many different applications and websites because it is a standard now. With material design and therefore material UI, which is just material design for React, you can have a responsive design as well. So you can work on all sorts of screen sizes very easily, much easier than building with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. With React and Material UI, you'll find yourself building websites much more easily and it'll just be so much cleaner and more efficient, your code and your whole website as well. It's just amazing. If you've never worked with a front-end library before like Bootstrap or Vue, then Material UI is going to be a great change from just developing with HTML and CSS. As well, Material UI provides a very easy way of providing cross-browser support. So it allows your users to access your site on all types of browsers, Firefox, Chrome, Safari, etc. And that is Material UI and why you should learn it. It's going to really speed up your development process and your design process especially. I'm very excited to teach you how to use both React and Material UI to build websites as an advancement on HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now, in the next lecture, we are going to talk about the prerequisites you'll need for this course, not very many, just what you'll need. So join me in the next lecture where we will talk about that. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our course. In this lecture, we will talk about what you will need to take this course. There's very little, but we need to discuss what is required for this course. You can use any computer to take this course. I will be using a Mac, but you can use a Windows or a Linux. It's fine. It will be compatible with any computer you have. You will need some basic knowledge of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript would be helpful as well, but HTML and CSS primarily, and we will include for you prerequisites of HTML and CSS. Now, because this is front end design, JavaScript is not necessary, but it would definitely be helpful, but not required. All right, and as well, you will need a code editor to follow along with. You can use an offline code editor that you download and install, such as Brackets, which is what I'll be using. You could also use an online code editor like jsbin.com and codepen.com or any other online code editor. This does mean, however, that you won't be installing React or Node to your computer. You'll just be using a CDN or a preloaded React app on a code editor. But that is fine. You can do that as well. Or you can use an offline code editor, which I do recommend like Atom or Visual Studio or a text editor. An offline code editor is going to be a lot easier to work with because you can have your whole project on your computer. You don't have to worry about going to the website and making sure the website loads, which can be a lot slower. So it's definitely a lot faster to have a code editor on your computer. All right, and other than a code editor, all source code will be included. So you can find the source code for every single lecture at the end of the section in a zip file. And to create a React app in an offline code editor, you will need Node. So I'm going to show you how you can get Node. 
This is just so that you can actually create a React app on your computer offline. If you're using an online code editor, then React will either already be pre-installed in the code editor, or you'll have to bring it in via a CDN. But if you're using the an offline code editor, like I will be doing, and as I recommend, then just go to this website here, nodejs.org, and go to the download page. So you can just click this link, and you'll be taken to the Node.js website. This is the homepage, and then the downloads tab is where you can go. Node is very commonly used. It is a JavaScript runtime that allows you to launch servers, and we're going to be creating our React app with Node because it is a very fast way to create a React app. And don't worry if you don't know what Node is, I'm going to be taking you step by step how to use it. So first, make sure you install it. So go to this website and choose the installer for your computer, whether you're on Windows, Mac, or another computer type. Click on one of these to download the installer package to your computer, and then you can go straight to that exact package file. So just open that package file and go through all of these steps to install Node and NPM. So you want to make sure you install both Node and NPM. And then just like that, you will have Node and NPM available to use on your computer. And that is all that you are going to need for this course. So join me in the next section. We're going to get started with building our first project with React. Hello everyone and welcome back to our course. In this lecture, I'm going to show you how you can build React apps online. Now, of course, I recommend using an offline code editor, but in case you can't install or download a code editor, I'm going to show you how you can build React apps online and follow along with this course online. So all you have to do is go to a website that has an online code editor, such as codesandbox.io. So visit codesandbox.io in any browser, and then you can create a sandbox. You don't even have to create an account. You can just click Create Sandbox, and this will allow you to create coding projects right here on the web. You can choose from a number of official templates. In our case, we're going to choose the React template because this is going to create a React app for us right here on the web. So this means we won't have to install Node and then as well create the React app via Node and install all the dependencies. It will actually all just be done for us here at codesandbox.io. And you can use any code editor that supports React. So here then you'll see, you'll have the files of your project here. Then you'll have dependencies, which is what your project is using. In our case, React, React DOM, and React Scripts. Those are required to make a React app. You can optionally sign in to save your project. Then here in the center tab, you have your code for any file that you want to open. And on the right-hand side, you have a preview of the website that your code is creating. So you can just change text here and it'll immediately start changing what is rendered on the site. So you can actually just launch React this way. The disadvantages are that it is slower and it's less convenient because you don't have the project on your computer, but it is an option for sure. You can visit the console and a lot of code editors look the same. So whether you're using Code Sandbox or another code editor, you'll get the same kind of look here. Now, every React app will have this same file structure. You'll have a public folder, a source folder, and a package.json file. And of course, there can be more as well. In this public folder, we have index.html. And this here, this index.html file, it just contains the HTML file that is rendering the site. And instead of writing all of the HTML for the site here in index.html, with React, we're actually going to build HTML components via React and with Material UI for the styling. So we're going to find that our 
creation is going to be a lot more efficient and fast because instead of having all of our HTML inside of one big body, we're going to have it separated into several components that we can reuse and it's just a lot nicer to work with. In the source folder is where we have all of our React files. App.js is the starting point here. We are importing styles.cs for any styling we might want to add, and then we export a default function app. This is the syntax to create a component. So in this case, we have an app component. This is the primary component that contains the whole app itself. Then here we have a return statement where we have your regular old HTML tags. And here we're returning all of these HTML tags inside of the app component, which means that we are going to be able to create this HTML whenever we create a new instance of app. And we're going to create a lot more components you will see other than just app. We can have as many components as we need. We can have components for a grid, for a header, for even an image container. We can have components for any type of HTML section that we want on our website. So instead of just dumping all of our HTML code into one file, we'll have it separated. Then we have index.js. Here we can write the JavaScript functionality behind the site. We're not going to be adding any functionality in this course because we're focused on UI, the user interface. So you don't actually need any JavaScript for our project. But this is the default file that will be created for you here. And in here is where you could write more functionality. Then you have styles.css. This is how you can put styles on your whole website. For example, currently we have styles on the app. If I remove this font family, then that is going to directly affect the app. We're also going to learn how we can style components via React and via Material UI. So that will be very fun to see because it's a lot more convenient than styling everything with CSS, with one huge CSS file. That will really get out of hand if you have a larger website. Then finally, you have package.json. This is a data file, a JSON data file, and it just says the information about your project. So you have curly brackets here because it's JSON data, and you have different properties here, the name, the version, description, keywords, and it's like metadata here, the dependencies and the scripts as well. And if you add more dependencies, which we will, we'll add dependencies for material UI and material UI icons, then you'll see they will appear here. We are going to be including all of our dependencies via node, but if you're using an online code editor, then you can just add a dependency right here just by searching for it and clicking on it and it will be added right there. So that's the option for adding dependencies if you are going to be using an online code editor. All right, awesome. And that is how you can create your React apps right here on the web if you so wish. It is a great way to get started quickly, but I will also show you how you can handle larger projects, long-term projects that are on your computer so you won't even need the web you can build offline. Awesome, so join me in our next section where we will start our project. Hello everyone and welcome back to our course. In this lecture, we're going to create our React app for our new project. So here I am in the terminal app, which is the app here, the terminal, also known as the command prompt on Windows or the command line you may have heard, you can just find it by searching for it in your launch pad, search for terminal, and it's right there, one of your applications. All right, so here, in this terminal is how we're going to create our React app. So first we have to type in CD, which specifies that we want to go to some path on our computer. The path I want to go to is the folder where I am going to save my project. In my case, the folder I'm going to save my project in is going to be called React. And so I'm going to right click on that folder. And then you see here we have this option copy. If you hold the option key, then the copy option is actually going to change to instead of copying the folder, you're going to copy the folder as a path name. So you can hold alt or option to see that 
here. Now this is on Mac. If you're on a different OS, like if you're on Windows, then you will just have to copy the path name, which will be in the header of the tab for you. So just copy the path to your folder and then paste that after CD. So we have CD and then followed by the path to where we want to create our project. Then you can go ahead and hit enter. Okay, so once you hit enter, you will be inside of the folder. You'll see here my Alex's MacBook Pro has changed to Alex's MacBook Pro React, which means I'm now not inside of my global folder, but I'm inside of specifically that React folder at this path. And this is where I want to create my app. So how do I create my app? Well, I have to have NPM installed. And for that, I'm already going to assume that we have Node installed. And all we have to do is call the command MPX create React app, followed by the name of the folder that we want. So create React app. This is a key phrase that is going to use NPM, in this case, NPX, which is included in NPM. And this is how we can create a boilerplate template project, the starting project for a React app. We just have to follow this with the name of the project folder, which I'm going to call my website dash project. Then if I hit enter, give it a moment and your terminal or your command prompt is going to start creating the React app. Look at this. We have this message creating a new React app in this folder, this new folder called the website dash project. Now this is going to take several minutes. So be patient as it installs all of the required packages. It's going to install React and React DOM, which are the two different packages you need for React as well as React scripts. And it's going to do this with a create React app CRA template. So this is going to create a very bare bones React app for you. This is going to take a couple of minutes. So just wait for it to finish all of its installing. And after that, you will see inside of that folder, look at that, we now have a new folder called website dash project. And if you double click on it, you'll see we have several items inside there. We have a package.json file and a node modules folder. And we'll actually have more files here that will appear. We just have to wait for the installation to complete. Okay, but node modules, that is NPM inside of that folder. We can now use node. And package.json, this is the data file, the JSON data file that stores all of the information about the project, such as all of the dependencies. All right, and I'm going to allow this to install. And once it's finished, we will see the final result. And several minutes later, we are all done. We get this message, happy hacking, and we can read above that our app has been successfully created. Okay, and if we now go to that folder of website project, look at this. Now we have not just node modules and package JSON, we also have a public folder and a source folder. So the public folder contains our index.html file and any other public files we might want. And our source folder contains the React behind the app. So we have app.js, which is the main starting point, and index.js as well. Those are the two main starting points. So we could already run this app. All you have to do is first go into our specific project folder. Currently, we're inside of our greater folder, React, but we want to go specifically into the folder for the project, which is CD website folder or website project in my case. And then we want to call npm start, which will launch a server for the project. So just give it a moment and you'll get this message starting the development server. And then if you go to any browser like Chrome or Firefox and you open up localhost 3000, then you will see your project. Once you get this message, you can copy this link into your browser or the second link. If you like, they both work the same way. Then you will be able to view your project. So if I go to my browser and here it is, and I go to that link localhost 3000, well, then this is what I get. I get my basic 
React template. And if we go into our source folder, app.js, we can edit this file and create a whole website from this starter React app. And this is the easiest way to create a React app from your computer. Awesome, okay, so once you verify that you have your localhost 3000 showing you this page, that means you have successfully created the React app. If you have any issues, just search them in your favorite search engine or stackoverflow.com and most issues, if not all issues, will be able to be solved that way just by searching up the issue online. Awesome, so we have created our app. Our next step is going to be to install the project dependencies that we will need for our project. So join me in the next lecture where we will work on that. Hello everyone and welcome back to our course. In the previous lecture, we created our React app. And in this lecture, we are going to install the dependencies that we will need for the project. So jump back into your terminal here and we want to go back into our project folder. So we can cancel the server by hitting Control C and this will cancel the server. So now if you go to that localhost 3000 page, you'll no longer be able to see it. The page will no longer connect. And we want to cancel the server temporarily because what we want to do next is install the material UI dependency. So we're going to use npm to install material UI. With that, we use the keyword npm install, which means we want to install something via node. And I'm going to install material UI, which uses the specific keyword at material dash UI slash core. Then hit enter. And this is going to start installing material UI slash core. That will install the material UI dependency specifically into this project, the website project folder. And that will allow us to access material UI. So give this a minute to install. And once it is installed, we'll be able to use material UI in our project. Awesome. Okay, here we go. We got this message that says plus material UI slash core version 4.11.3. All right, and this means we've successfully added Material UI. So with Material UI, it was designed with the Roboto font as its main font to be used. But to actually use the Roboto font, we have to install that font as well. So for that, we use npm install a font source dash Roboto and hit enter. And this is going to allow us to use the font source Roboto. And that's because with Material UI, it was designed with the Roboto font in mind. But of course, you can use any font that you like. Now, after that has installed, we'll be able to use Roboto in our project. And great, there we go. It's successfully installed. Another dependency that we'll want are icons. The Material UI library has an icon sublibrary along with it with over a thousand icons. And these are like bootstrap icons. They are pre-made icons that look nice. So let's install them as well. So we have access to the icons. For that, I'm going to use npm install again. And this time I'm going to install at material-ui slash icons. So not core, but icons this time. And hit enter in order for this next dependency to be included. All right, and that is going to be the last dependency that we'll need. Once all of these dependencies have been included or installed, we can then use them in our project. And I'm going to show you how we can use them in our project in the next lecture where we'll get started with actually manipulating our project files via the files themselves rather than via the terminal. So let's make sure that Material UI downloads successfully first or installs successfully first. And great, there it goes. And awesome, those are all of the dependencies that we will need. So join me in the next lecture where we will start editing our project files. Hello everyone and welcome back to our course. In this lecture, we're going to start configuring our project. We're going to configure it to work across multiple browsers and also 
on multiple devices for responsivity. So first up, open your project folder inside of your code editor of choice. I'm using brackets, but you can use any code editor. And navigate to the file app.js. Here in app.js, we're going to start by changing up this file because currently it has a bunch of default code that was created for the template project. We have the image source of the React logo, we have some text, we have a link to the React site, and we have some more text that says learn React. And what we can do is we can actually just remove the whole div that has the class name of app here. And we can recreate it ourselves. So we're going to make the div class name equals app again. And make sure you close that tag as well. So you always want to have one parent object. That's why we have this div to contain all of our other items inside of a function that has some HTML being returned. So really we can just leave our code like this. We just can have this div that has a class name. All the other stuff that was just part of the template, we don't actually need it. We do, however, need to import React at the top of our file here. I'm going to import React from React and I can do this because I have installed React via NPM. That happened when I created my React project. That means React is now available for me to import. All right, now this is just setting up our project. So just clearing that app.js page. So currently if I go back into my terminal and I relaunch my server, I'll see that page will look different. If you want to go back to previous terminal commands that you've run, just hit the up arrow key and you can see all the previous commands we ran. I want to run npm start again, which will start my project on my live server. Just give it a few seconds here and then it will start. It will start the development server and you can visit the link that it tells you once it's ready in your browser. There you go. Now it is ready. You'll also get this message compiled with warnings and the warning is that our logo is defined but it's never used. So we have a variable that was defined but never used. So let's fix that before we continue on. We could also ignore this, but let's fix this. So this error comes up at line 18 in app.js. So that's exactly where we have to go. We have to go to app.js in our code editor. And here at line one, we can see that we're importing logo from logo.svg, but we're importing something that we then removed because we are no longer showing that React logo. So we have to remove the import statement as well. That is going to ensure we're not importing something that we're not needing. And look at that. My server actually refreshed automatically and so did my terminal. And now I get the message compiled successfully because I have fixed all the warnings. So now I can copy this link and I can visit it in my browser and we will see that now our page actually is just going to be a blank page. So if I open up my console with option command I or another command depending on your terminal, depending on your computer type, if you can clear the console and then refresh and you'll see in the console, we just have this message that we've navigated to the local host live server link and we're waiting for an update signal, which means we're waiting for potential updates to the site via our JavaScript. Awesome. So now instead of getting that template, we now have a blank page and that's because we removed all of our content from our app.js file and we just left with a div. We could put in an H1 here that says welcome and close it off and save the file and then go back to our browser. And if I go back there and refresh, then look at that. Now I have welcome that's appeared here. So I could put any content that I want into that app.js file and it will appear in my localhost 3000. It will appear on the page. So this app.js file, it's going to communicate to the web page and render the content of the app. And we're going to look a lot more into that throughout the whole project. Okay, so far we have successfully cleaned up this app.js file so we no longer have that default template code. 
Next, I want to make sure that my website looks good on different browsers, and that's known as cross-browser compatibility. So for cross-browser compatibility, what I'm going to do is import a specific component from Material UI. So yes, we're going to put Material UI to use immediately. We're going to import what's known as the CSS baseline component from the string of at material UI slash core slash CSS baseline. And you can use single or double quotes, doesn't matter, but it's best to be consistent. Okay, so this is a component known as CSS baseline. And what it does is it is a collection of HTML elements and their style normalizations. So if you're familiar with normalize.css, it's very similar to that, and it provides cross-browser consistency. So that means that the default styling of HTML elements will be consistent across different browsers. Otherwise, the default styling of elements, like a div or an h1, those would be inconsistent across different browsers. So that's just making sure to account for that. We also have to actually put this to use, not just import it, but actually use it. And what we do is inside of app.js, we are going to put in a CSS baseline component just like this inside of the app div. All of our items should be inside of one parent, the app div. So here we're putting to use the CSS baseline component. We're creating a tag for it and it's self-closing, which means it closes in the same tag where it opens. All right, and now if we save this and we refresh our page, we still have everything looking the same, but other items are accounted for for different browsers. So if we were on an older browser, for example, or a different browser and we had other elements, this CSS baseline ensures that they look similar instead of how they would look by default, which is slightly different on different browsers. Awesome, and one more thing we want to also account for. We want to configure responsivity. Responsivity means that our app will look good on different devices and different screen sizes. As well, it ensures not only that our app will look good on different screens, but also that it will allow for touch zooming and responsivity, touch screens, proper rendering, all of that. So how do we make sure that our website is responsive, which is really important because Material UI is actually mobile first, which means that it first is designed for mobile and then it will scale up components for larger screen sizes with CSS media queries, but it's primarily for mobile. So how do we make sure our website is responsive? Well, we're going to go into the public folder and enter the file index html here in index.html we can see we have several pieces of metadata already we have a link as well we have different links to different files like manifest.json and we have our title of the page react app as well as a body to account for if javascript is not enabled on the client and then we have a div id root and this root is going to ensure that the React actually renders the body, not HTML. Inside of this index.html file, we have this meta tag of the name viewport. And this meta tag is what handles responsivity. So currently we can see that the content, the width of the content, which means the width of the page, will equal your device width. The initial scale of the content will equal one, which means 100% zoom by default. And we also want to add here, minimum scale will also be one. All right, and that is all we need for responsivity. So make sure that you have this line included. Of course, there's a lot more you could do for responsivity as well, and but this is all we need to start off. And I'm going to show you more about responsivity later on in the project. Awesome, okay, so now if we go back to our browser, we refresh, well, nothing has changed, but we're setting up and configuring our project for responsivity and different browsers as well. 
Great, okay, next up, we can actually start putting more content onto the page. We're going to begin by adding our first piece of content to our website, other than this welcome, of course, which we'll remove. And that is going to be a navigation bar. So we will build a navigation bar in the next lecture. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our course. In this lecture, we're going to build our first item for our site, which is going to be a navigation bar. So let's jump back into our code editor here and we're going to create a new file inside of the source folder. So right click and select new file and call this file our navigation bar.js. This file is going to be a React component that is going to hold the HTML code or the components for a navigation bar, but they're created with React. So at the top of this file, I am going to import React from React, and then we'll import more components from React as we go. Okay, so let's start by creating a new component. For that, we're going to export a default function that we'll call navigation bar. And then because we're exporting this, we can import it into our app and use this component whenever we want to create a navigation bar. All right, so how do we create a navigation bar? Well, we're going to return some data and it will be in the form of tags. And we just put together a bunch of sub components that will make up the navigation bar. For example, we want to typically have one parent as usual to contain all the other items. And in this case, we're going to use not a div, but a container. So open up the tags to open and close a container. A container is from Material UI. So I am going to import at the top of my file. I have to import a container from at Material UI slash core slash container because that is where this component resides. Now there are many different Material UI components and we're going to be looking at the most common ones as we build our project, starting with this container. So this acts as a container to hold all of our other objects. Now, what else may we want inside of a navigation bar? Well, typically you'll have some menu items that the user can go to, and then also you'll have your company name or your name if it's a portfolio website. So let's start by putting in the name of our company. So typically because it's a navigation bar and it has tools, we want to put it in all the content into a toolbar. So I'm going to create opening and closing tags for a toolbar. Typically it's good to open and close them immediately. Otherwise you could forget to close them by accident. This toolbar is another material UI component. So I have to import it again. I have to import toolbar from add material slash or dash UI slash core slash toolbar. So I'm importing toolbar here. And you can see all of the different components available to you like container and toolbar if you go to the material UI documentation. So feel free to do that. All right, so we have a container and a toolbar because typically wherever you have tools, you want to create a toolbar. The first item in our toolbar is going to be a typography item. So I'm going to create another tag typography and I'll open and I'll close it, typography. Okay, typography is when you want to have styled text. Now, if we want to actually use a typography item, we have to import typography from at material-ui slash core slash typography. So we can use material UI because we installed it earlier, but we do then have to import whichever component we want to use like typography. We have to import it from material UI and we have to import it from exactly the file inside of material UI where it's located. In this case, it's located inside of core inside of the typography file. All right, so now we have the typography component and how do we use that? Well, we just put in some text that we want to be styled and then we can give it stylings later on. Let's put in some text here. I'm going to put in Mammoth Interactive, a company name. You could put your own name or any name you want here. This is the title of the navigation bar, which is the company name. All right, so currently, if you go to your server, 
and you refresh your page, well, nothing has appeared, even though we've created this file. The reason is, yes, we created this file, this navigation bar.js file, but have we actually used it anywhere? Have we called it anywhere? No, we just created it. So we have to actually put it to use inside of our file app.js because app.js, this is the file that is the starting point. So this app.js component, it holds all the other components in the site. That's why it's called app because it's the parent most, it's the highest parent of all the other components. And currently we have CSS baseline and we have welcome. Okay, I'm going to put in here, I'm going to replace the header or the heading one. I'm going to replace it with a navigation bar component and it's self-closing, so make sure you close it off. So here we have navigation bar and this refers directly to my navigation bar function that I created inside of navigation bar.js. To actually be able to access this component in my app component, I have to import the component. So I have to import at the top of the file navigation bar from the location where my navigation bar resides. So where does my navigation bar reside? Well, it actually resides inside of the parent folder, which is source slash navigation bar. And the extension .js is just assumed, but you could add that as well, navigation bar .js if you wanted to. So this dot slash, it refers to the parent folder of this current file. This current file is app.js and its parent is source. That is the parent. Then with a forward slash, we're going into a child of the parent, which is navigation bar. All right, so now if I save this and I go back into my browser, which is launching my server, well, it already refreshed for me. Look at this. Now I have the text Mammoth Interactive. And I'm just going to zoom out to 100% so you can see what it looks like by default at 100% zoom. So look at that. We now have the text Mammoth Interactive. And this is using my navigation bar component. So we've successfully created a navigation bar component with React. And then we've been able to use that component inside of app.js. And you can already see how much cleaner of development this is because instead of throwing all of our HTML into one big index.html file, we're separating it into components. All right, now that we've created a navigation bar, we're going to give this navigation bar a lot more content. But let's move on to that in the next lecture because we've done enough for this lecture. We've successfully managed to create the component. So in the next lecture, let's flesh out this navigation bar component even more. So join me over there. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this course. If you wanna watch the rest of the course, the link is down below. Not only we get the access to this course, but you'll get access to a lot of other courses in a huge bundle and it's on sale today. So buy it before the sale ends. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video.